sister of Notre Dame de Namur, and I am a member of the East West USA province. In ministry here at the Notre Dame Spirituality Center in Ipswich, Massachusetts. And today I'd like to share a few of my thoughts on this feast of the exaltation of the cross. As we all know, Julie was fond of reminding the sisters that without the cross, there is no sister of Notre Dame. And yet, for the longest time in my young religious life, I thought of our congregation marked by the cross as heavy, burdensome, and to me, it really was not appealing. My early catechism training was deeply ingrained in the world of sin and sinfulness, and did little to help in understanding the cross that Julie speaks of. It's only as I have grown up in Notre Dame that I've come to understand the depth of Julie's words and the truth that Jesus did not come to suffer and die for our sins as though a God of love would be so cruel as to send him with that as a motive. I've come to understand experience in some small way that Jesus' birth, life, and death reveal in the flesh the boundless love and the longing of our good God for each of us. Jesus left himself wide open to vulnerability out of a spirit of love. He challenged people's tendency to exclude, to judge, to react out of hate and fear. And he invited them to experience his love, to experience love in their own lives. His challenge was motivated by love, always love. And he invites us to do the same. For Jesus, love not suffering was always his focus. He kept choosing concrete acts of love, which eventually led to his death on the cross. As his lifeless body, entombed in death, waited for love to breathe life into him, the spirit of God's love did. Can we take time and just ponder such life-giving love? we truly love, then crosses and suffering are bound to be part of our journey. But the way in which we engage those crosses makes all the difference. How far will our love go in the face of suffering? And if we do, it should leave us all quite breathless. How have crosses born in love shaped our life? How has the Spirit breathed life in death-dealing moments of our own journey. As sisters of Notre Dame, how has the Spirit opened our eyes, ears, and hearts to ever new understandings of our call to participate with men, women, and children in shaping a new earth of life-giving relationships? Relationships that are rooted in compassion, love, mercy, and peace. For as the Spirit of God's love breathes life into us with an urgency to participate in shaping that new earth, we are, in fact, giving flesh in our time and place to the exaltation of the cross. Thank you. And God.